Hello, this is Alessandrina with Dexter and Alessandrina. And today I thought it would be quite helpful to talk about why it's often so difficult to comprehensively resolve our emotions. And what I mean by that is that we can go through cycles of feeling angry, feeling sad, feeling resentful, feeling uh, disempowered, any kind of emotion that we m might feel. And then it might, we might be able to resolve part of it or we might distract away from it or suppress it or repress it. And then it cycles back in because it hasn't the energy of it, the root cause of the emotion hasn't really been resolved. So one thing to be aware of and to understand more deeply is that, for instance, conscious parenting is pretty recent, meaning that uh, in the old days, <laughs> and it's still happening now, a lot of people used either um, uh, kind of violent language or uh, almost abusive behavior or disciplinary behavior to essentially um, regulate the emotions <laughs> of their children. <laughs> so when a child would get um, impatient or angry or frustrated or sad or feeling really out of control and, and kind of throw a tantrum, uh, until recently, uh, the societal uh, process of managing those energies and, and those outbursts of energy in the child uh, was to, um, to judge them, to punish them, to control them. And so we've learned that, we've internalized that, oh, when I feel negative emotion, I'm either in timeout or I'm uh, uh, <laughs> mom or dad put me under a cold shower. It does exist. <laughs> Some people do do that. Or uh, they reprimand me or they tell me that I did something wrong or bad or, you know, they, whatever like uh, many different options that were uh, prior to the new movement of conscious parenting that were used to uh, regulate the emotions of children. And that's not a process of regulation, it's just a, a process of um, punishing or suppressing or um, essentially uh, wanting to control the child into changing behavior instead of helping the child understand uh, their emotions and help them find a channel for those energies, those emotions that are flowing through them. So um, as the movement for conscious parenting continues to expand, now we have uh, new ways of regulating emotions uh, for children, whether it's like helping them, you know, take a walk in nature, breathe, meditate, uh, talk with them, ask them about how they feel, why they feel the way they feel, tell them stories that help them understand their emotions, um, help them jump on a trampoline to change also the energy, uh, whatever is used. That, that was not done. So essentially the child would be in negative emotional state and not know why they were feeling the way uh, they were feeling. And then the, uh, they were met with the energy of judgment or frustration or uh, shame or even using guilt um, and, and rejection of the behavior and, and a, a sense of abandonment by the parents. And so once we internalize that, what happens is that when we feel negative emotions, we, a part of us that's developed an identity that cannot be abandoned socially, starting with the parents, uh, essentially says it's bad or wrong for me to feel the way I feel and projects from what was learned in childhood and what was internalized in childhood that it's problematic that the emotion exists. And what that does is that actually isolates us, separates us from resolving the emotion because once we judge feeling angry, once it's not okay for us to feel the way we feel, whatever emotion we feel, because it's not um, matching our social identity. So our, the personal identity we've developed 
that is good and, and kind and loving and joyful and happy and unabandonable societally, that uh, image is going to clash with the emotion. It's going to say, oh, I'm not an angry person. I'm not a resentful person. I'm not uh, uh, whatever you're feeling in that moment, really rejecting that. And so the moment you reject it, you don't accept it, you, you are um, not wanting to identify with it and you're imagining that people's emotions are part of their identity. And, and not to say that if someone practices the same emotion over and over again, it can feel like that's their identity because there's so much in that energy, in that emotion, and ultimately it's not who they are, not truly. So the moment that we try to preserve our identity and sense of self as a process of projecting what happened with our parents in childhood and the rejection we felt at some level, even if the parent didn't do anything and they felt it, they felt, oh, the child should not behave that way. Like it's problematic that they're crying or throwing a tantrum instead of just being present and holding the space. So then we internalize that and now we're in that process where every time we feel something, we feel it uh, and we bounce it off of mom and dad and, and how we were received in our emotional process by mom and dad. And then we get stuck because most of the time is very few parents. Again, the movement of conscious parenting is quite new and people are evolving more and more in their understanding of how um, the way that we uh, raise our children, what, how it affects our uh, experience of self and, and reality and, and our personality. And for the most part, for most people, uh, we, we're not in a process where we accept our emotions. Therefore, we can work with the energy of it. The moment that we don't accept it, we judge it, and we kind of reject it from our identity, now we can understand it. And now we separate ourselves from ourselves and from others. And, and now it's like, I'm good if I'm like this. And this person is good if they're like this, and if they're like that, they're a bad person. Or if I'm like that, then I'm a bad person. And because we don't want to be bad and we don't want to feel bad, we escape that. So instead of like, oh, I felt the energy of anger, and then working with it, accepting it and, and understanding it, well, why did I feel anger? Who is it that feels anger and why, right? That's one of the processes that we teach. And so because that's not done and we're, we get stuck in the cycle of judgment, then we suppress it, repress it, hide it away from us. We distract away from it so that we don't have to feel it and therefore to feel uh, essentially the fear of abandonment. So we're trying to escape the fear of abandonment through this process of judgment. And it doesn't work and it's an endless cycle, meaning that you'll stay stuck in that over and over again and it doesn't feel good and it doesn't resolve the emotions. So then it means that for the rest of your life, unless you choose to break that cycle, you will continue to cycle through the same emotions and, and feel a sense of um, failure or uh, being bad or wrong because you're like you know you don't want to be angry you know you don't want to be sad that's not your intention and yet you keep cycling through the emotion and therefore it feels like something's wrong and you're you're not uh, meeting your own expectation so if you release your expectation and you know that your intention is to feel good and to have positive emotions and interactions then when the uh, emotions that come up uh, are not those that you intend, then you can look at them and you can introspect, again with the who is it process for instance, or I am my feeling of, or I am my anger, or I am uh, my shame, I am my feeling of shame. And when you do that, uh, when you allow yourself to process out the emotion itself, because you're not escaping it, you're not trying to distract away from it, you're in the energy of it, and you have a process that helps you stay with it and be aware of it, and be aware of where it originates from. Because really, <laughs> uh, when, once you find the source of the emotion, once you find whatever belief or fear is getting triggered in you that's 
essentially triggering the emotion, then you can resolve that, you can clear that, you can heal that, and then the emotion ceases to come up. So you're breaking the cycle. And as you become aware of more and more uh, of the different fears and beliefs in your system that can trigger the emotions that you're working with, that you're working to dismantle, then there's going to be less of, and less of that, less and less limiting beliefs, less and less fear in your system. And then when there's less and less of that, there'll be less and less uh, negative emotions as a result, because all negative emotions are stemming from essentially a fear, a belief, a judgment, or an expectation that's not met. So once you're understanding that and you dismantle that and you release that, then you can be free to experience uh, yourself as you choose with your intention to be good, not good as, oh, if I do this, I'm good. And if I don't do this, then I'm bad. No, really to just experience the goodness of your being, of your soul. And then to give yourself the space, the time, the energy to heal and to clear any parts of your ego. Uh, 